Welcome to Shout Your Cause with Sally Hendrick, a digital magazine where you can get found, get heard, and get inspired with content that challenges us to be globally minded. Our focus is on raising awareness around social justice issues, cultural differences, and to bring you the people dedicating their lives to tackling challenging topics as their way of giving back. Let us be your advocate to make your voices heard around the world. All right, welcome back to Shout Your Cause, everybody. I've got a great guest today. This is Deb, who I met on TikTok. Hey, Deb, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. good. It's a beautiful day in Nashville, and I hear that you're not too far from me. Not too far. I'm just northeast of Nashville. Cool. Well, we're going to have to meet up in person at, at one, uh, one of these days, okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, recently, you changed your TikTok name, which we met on TikTok because I noticed your name had Tennessee in it, but you've changed that name. Why don't you tell us what your new username is on TikTok? Absolutely. So my original name was Left Brain Tennessee, and it was one of those names that I just kind of grabbed out of the air as I was making my account, and you have to have a name, so I just put it out there. Yeah, I never quite sat right with me. And so I spent a considerable amount of time thinking about what I what I really wanted my name to be, because I wanted it to be um, indicative of who I am as a person. And so the new name is the realistic mystic. And there are two underscores in that. So it's the underscore realistic underscore mystic. And and that really um, felt authentic to me because. I think like a lot of people, it doesn't make me unique, but I have these kind of two, um, you know, these two sides to myself and one side can be quite mystical and quite willing to accept things because it rings true in my spirit and my intuition. And then this other side that's pretty pragmatic and science oriented and all that stuff. So uh, that's kind of what that speaks to. So if you, would you say that the mystic part maybe aligns with spirituality? Oh, absolutely. So okay. I, uh, yeah, I am, um, I'm currently the, one of the co-interim ministers at Unity of Music City. And mm -hmm. um, this spiritual journey is one I've been on most of my adult life where um, just, just kind of a general uh, seeking out truth with a capital T right? The, the truth that is true no matter what. And so um, I, I do public speaking for, for them. I'm also, this uh, you don't know since we last talked, uh, I am starting um, an interfaith ministry program this fall. So I'm kind of uh, um, making that a little bit more official, begrudgingly after fighting it for years and years. But but my spirituality is, uh, I call myself a hummingbird. I get nectar from a lot of different flowers. Um, I, I value what I learned from, you know, from, from uh, Islam. I learn a sense of reverence and generosity. Uh, from Judaism, I learn a sense of history and literature and culture. From Christianity, uh, I learn grace. And then, of course, Hinduism. I've been to India twice, so I have a real soft spot for, for Hinduism and, and Indian spirituality. I absolutely love that. When I was a little girl, I grew up in West Tennessee in a really small town. Mm -hmm. And I heard, you know, like, well, this church does this and this church has these rules and this church does this. And I always felt like, well, can't we just have a pew for everybody? And let's put <laughs> these people on this row and these people on this row. Because, I mean, we were really ingrained in our Methodist church growing up. And you counted down the ninth row from the back was ours. That was the Dunlap row. And that's just how it was. And we were there. My uncle would sit on the end and he would uh, lean on his elbow and fall asleep. And then after he died, my dad scooted over and leaned on the, his elbow and fell asleep. And then my <laughs> uncle now sits, sits in that spot. He's the last one left. But I always thought there's a place for everybody. I don't understand how you can punish someone or leave someone out or expect to be able to force them into something else just because of the situation they were born in. Right. You know, it's, it's, I think we fell into a delusion long ago as human beings that, um, that different, um, inherently 
demands that there has to be a right and a wrong. And so, you know, people look at their, their own, have tended to look at their own spirituality from the perspective of, well, if what I believe is right, then anybody who believes something different must be wrong. And I think we need to break out of that. Yeah, we do. And I think that, you know, because we met on TikTok, because I liked your content and I reached out to you and I thought, you know, this, this gal has a lot to say. And I feel like that that's a great platform. Social media has been kind of this double-edged sword for us because Mm -hmm. it's been used for good, but it's been used for evil as well. And we've got to be able to to find how can we actually bridge the gaps between people and create some sort of glue there that doesn't uh, allow us to let the bridges wash out. Absolutely. And so I really appreciate that that is your perspective as well. Do you have a dog? Learn unleashed potential dog training secrets with Duke Ferguson. This free video series will get you pro training tips so you can get your dog's attention, eliminate behavioral problems, and enhance your relationship in just 20 minutes a day. Sign up at sallyhendrick.com forward slash dog training. Now, as far as uh, the realistic part of it, you're saying the science part of it or the the reality of things or maybe the data, whatever that is. Right. What do you mean by that? Like, what are you into that gives that part of, you know, your spirit? Well, I'm an academician. I, I'm a, a college English professor. Okay. So my colleagues are scientists and mathematicians and very pragmatic Um, hard science kind of thinkers. And Mm -hmm. I so appreciate what they bring to the table. I mean, there's, there's a place for both of it. I, I, I used to say that my spirituality is the gospel of the paradox because um, I, I think that the sweet spot is sitting between two seemingly opposing things and gently holding them both up as, as having some validity. So there's this very mystical side where, you know, I can light my incense and meditate and believe in things that I don't see and, and have a deep faith. But at the same time, you know, when a scientist tells me I should take a vaccine, I believe the scientist, you know? Um, And so there's this very pragmatic um, kind of thing. You can go too far one way or the other. I think you can Mm -hmm. go so hard science that you give no credence to those things we can't explain. Or you can go so far uh, to the you know depths of spirituality that you're saying, well, you know, for instance, if you think about people who say, well, I am such a deep believer that I don't even need doctors. Well, I, you know, I'm going to the doctor. That's where I, I'm not going to judge you one way or the other, but I'm going to the doctor. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we have to strike a balance between, and we have to give credit. Credit. We have to give credit where credit is due because. Right you know, if we believe in a higher being and we believe that we were all created equal, if you will, in the eyes of God, then, then of course, that means that we have to give validity to the people who are able to measure and absolutely look at things and chart things and be able to say, this is, this is going to help us to survive as a society because no one really knows what happens after we're gone. Right. right. And everybody has different beliefs around that. And you know, that math and that science, it's its own kind of divinity. I mean, it's a kind of a, it's kind of a beautiful miracle in and of itself. Yeah. I agree with you. I like that. So why don't you tell me a little bit more about your writing? I'm really interested in that. I'm a writer myself and I'm actually writing a book. And I feel like every week when I write a chapter or a story, I feel like, goodness gracious, this is going to be 10 books. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> let's get into that a little bit. What is it that you like to write about or what are you working on? Well, so I, I write a lot of poetry um, and I do some essay work. I'm currently working on a memoir uh, about my father. My father was a minister and um, 
uh, there's, there's kind of quite a story around him. He was a minister. He was also probably a narcissist. And um, he was an incredibly loving and wonderful human being who made so many mistakes. Um, so he, that's what I'm working on at, at the moment. But, but I also do a lot of poetry. Um, um, most of my writing can be found at deb-more.com. Um, mm -hmm. Just a little plug in there. The dash is really important because I think you, I think you land on um, a far right uh, fundamentalist minister's page if you don't put the dash in there. So yeah, <laughs> it's kind of important. So, do you remember? And I don't. It, this was not too long ago, but somebody was running for some sort of office in either Nashville or Davidson County, in which I know you're not in Davidson County, but mm -hmm. her name was very close to Marsha Blackburn, <laughs> but it was something else like Martha Blackburn or something. Really? I don't actually, remember that. Oh, it was so funny. I went to one of her fundraisers at a friend of mine's apartment downtown here in Nashville. I live downtown and, and uh -huh. he was just around the corner and he uh, was doing a fundraiser in his apartment, her, his condo down here. And I showed up and I was like, oh, it's so nice to meet you. I'm going to vote for you. Thank you. Blah, blah, blah. And then her ads started co coming out and she sang a song that was all about uh, her being like Martha or whatever her name was. I can't mm -hmm. remember, but it was, she goes, I'm not that one. I'm not that Marsha Blackburn. I'm, oh, wow. <laughs> I'm this one. And it was just hilarious to me, um, you know, just to be able to see that commercial. Right. I, I don't know why I thought about that. Well, the well, names. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It's like <laughs> Like yeah, yeah, the people, names because of the well, sorry for the poor guy out there who's named John Wayne Gacy, right? Or yeah, oh, oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the Jeffrey Dahmer's parents did change their name. So, oh, did they? Okay. Um, yeah, 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 they changed their last name. Um, I'm pretty sure I heard that somewhere. Do you want to stand out from the crowd with your content? Come discover how to market yourself as an expert, as a change maker, as a positive influence on other people's lives. With the Exponential Marketing Club, you will learn the ins and outs of content marketing that makes a difference in the world. Visit sallyhendrick.com forward slash club. All right, so without going like too far off into any direction, um, I wanted to bring up a TikTok that you had posted a little while ago. It's a story about, you gotta, I, I keep messing up the name. It's Carmela Marcella Garcia right. at the Gay Bar Church. You called it the Gay Bar Church. Yes, I just, I just called the TikTok the Gay Bar Church. So <laughs> um, this is a story about when I was in a gay bar in um, probably 1990, somewhere in the 89 to 91, 92 area. Um, and it was a, a, a bar in Nashville called the Warehouse 28. It was on the west side of Nashville. And anybody who was part of the LGBTQ community during that era knows the warehouse. So uh, I was there one night for an AIDS fundraiser. And this was still in the days when um, there wasn't a lot of public support uh, for those who were, who were victims of AIDS or suffering with AIDS. And so the gay community had accepted the fact that this disease was out there and understood how it was transmitted. The gay community moved into high gear with education and support um, because nobody else was doing it for us. So um, there was an AIDS fundraiser at the warehouse this particular night, and um, that there were a couple of uh, young men who had AIDS who were there sitting on the front row. Um, they looked pretty emaciated uh, in those days. We didn't have the treatments we do now, and so um, th they were visibly ill. And uh, they were kind of sitting in the front, the you know the little spread of the footlights or the spotlights there. And this um, drag queen named Carmela Marcella Garcia, who was actually the MC of the show, and, and she was known for that. She was very funny, and she would do a lot of MC work. But she'd been MCing the whole show, and at one point, she sat down at an upright piano, which was a little odd because most drag shows, at least in those days, were all lip-synced. 
she sat down at a piano and she asked the crowd, which was about oh, five or 600 people probably, how many of you here were raised in the church? And every single hand shot up. I mean, I really didn't see anybody who didn't raise their hand. And then Carmela said, well, I hope that this doesn't bother you, but I'm going to sing this song for my mama and for all the boys we've lost, and maybe even for you. She sat down at the piano and she proceeded to sing a hymn called The Old Rugged Cross. And there's a line in there that says, the emblem of suffering and shame. And it was just amazing how well that song fit with the kind of shame and suffering that so many in our community had endured during that time. And by the time she finished, there wasn't a dry eye in the place. I mean, and so I, I finished the TikTok by saying, you know, that's the story of how the best church service I ever attended was in a gay bar. And I think that's part of, it speaks both to my, um, my role as a member of the LGBTQ community, but also um, touches me because of my spirituality. The idea that God and the presence of God can be found anywhere. I love that. And I bet there wasn't a dry eye in the room. Yeah, I can I imagine that. that the love mm -hmm. and the, the pain and the memories and everything would all come together and come out in that moment. Yes, absolutely. Especially with a spiritual song like that, that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. I had people on that TikTok who were, I, I got quite a, quite a few views and quite a few comments and I had people say, first off, who wanted to get in the comments and just mention the name of someone they knew who they had lost to AIDS, just to kind of bring their memory and their name back up. But also, I, I heard from people who um, who weren't familiar with the song. They'd never heard it before, but they they were still crying because they understood the, the emotion of that moment. Mm -hmm. And you know that most of those people, especially being from the South, if they were in Nashville, um, had probably heard the song and then yes. it just brings you back to those childhood memories of like, this is great being a kid, everything's wonderful, but then you grow up and find out that, oh, well, maybe I don't fit into the same box as most people or as what's acceptable. And then you had this love and connection to the church, but then all of a sudden the church looks at you as an enemy. Absolutely. And in 1990, even so much more than today, um, those people in that bar who were raising their hand, having been raised in the church, I, I guarantee you that almost every single one of them had in some way, shape or form been ousted or felt unwelcome or had left because they didn't, they didn't feel any sense of being welcome or validated or loved. And that's what it's all about. Yep, exactly validated, loved, welcomed, mm -hmm. not ignored some, or admonished. I, exactly. Exactly. And not tolerated, but celebrated, I, you know, right, I, had a, right. I had a person on one of my uh, TikToks the other day comment, made a beautiful comment. I'm going to remember this always. She said, it's always interesting to me how um, she said, when, when someone from the church says, now I'm going to, I'm saying this with love what's getting ready to come is a whole lot of hate. And I thought that was a pretty pertinent statement. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Turn what you know into what you do. Join the platform with the most ways to monetize what you know, whether it's online courses, coaching, memberships, podcasts, newsletters, communities, or more. Kajabi gives you all the tools you need to build, market, and sell it with just a few clicks. Sign up at sallyhendrick.com forward slash Kajabi. That's K-A-J-A-B-I. So as far as your hope about what's happening right now, I mean, I feel like we're in this paradigm shift or some sort of entrance into a new era, which is what I've named this, this second season of my podcast, A New Era. Yeah. Yeah, we're in uh, something. <laughs> what's your hope around that, about what's to come? What's your cause or your platform that you want to be a part of? Well, 
you know, gosh, we are in some kind of era, aren't we? And my hope is that, um, you know, new creation always comes out of chaos. So uh, hopefully we are in the business of creating something new. And my at the underlying all of my causes, whether I am advocating for the LGBTQ community, advo advocating for Black Lives Matter, advocating for anyone's equality, um, at the at the heart of it is a sense of equality and mutual respect. And um, I hope I don't always succeed at this, but I hope to be um, a source of that kind of mutual respect in the world. You know. Um, one of the things that, that currently is pretty bothersome to me is the ease with which we've become name callers. And I was gonna um, say that. Yeah, we, we've just gotten to a place where we're just so at ease with calling people horrid, horrid things. And, and um, I love freedom of speech. I'm never one for censorship, but I, I do believe in a kind of self-censorship for myself to grow as a human being, then I have to be very careful with the words that come out of my mouth. And um, because I believe that words become our reality, we speak our reality into existence every day. And so, um, yeah, learning to just, and that mutual respect, if we're gonna have mutual respect for each other, then that's got to include um, speaking kindly about each other, even when we disagree. You know, I, I posted and it's really, about, it's really hard when you're yeah. in the comment section Ugh. and you don't know who this person is. They could be anybody and they start with some incendiary remark or sometimes don't, people don't even realize that their labeling is so offensive until right. it comes back to them. Right. Exactly. And, and yeah, that's hard. And, and we're not having those conversations face to face. That's why I, that is the whole entire reason that I even started this podcast is because yeah. I wanted to be able to say, you know what, maybe you're taking someone out of context. Maybe you're not wow. hearing the whole story. Right. Maybe you should listen to the backstory and the reasons why people feel the way they feel and mm -hmm. realize that the more you fight against that, the more people are just going to dig their heels in Absolutely. And it's so much better to just open up. Absolutely. And even when you know the backstory, if it's something you disagree with, that still doesn't mean you have to be nasty, you know? So, right. I mean, I, I did a post the other day about uh, Senator Marsha Blackburn from Tennessee, and I probably, <laughs> as much as anyone on the planet, I disagree with absolutely everything she has ever claimed to stand for. And when I speak about her, she's going to be Senator Marsha Blackburn because there's, I can disagree with her and mm -hmm. I don't have to be nasty and call her names. It's one of the things I, I require of my students in the classroom. We sometimes start talking about politics or social justice issues or anything, things of that nature. And my only rule is that you refer to people in a respectful manner and using their titles. Um, so it's President Trump, it's Secretary Clinton, it's Vice President Harris. Whether you agree or disagree with any of them, you talk about them respectfully. Well, I would have failed on that because I even commented on that video of yours and I said, she's the most vile woman ever. <laughs> well, now she, <laughs> there's, a, there's a line there. <laughs> There's a line between nouns and adjectives, right? Oh, okay, good. Maybe, <laughs> so that, maybe I'm okay. So sometimes it is truthful to say that someone is lying about something. I love yeah. the work. I don't know if you've read Ibram X. Kendi, How to Be an Anti-Racist. I have he, not, but I've heard a, about it. It's a fantastic book. And one of the important distinctions he makes is the difference between it, it's a person and I'm summarizing, so let him speak for himself. But basically, the, a person is not racist. The behavior is racist. So it's like the same thing when a person lies. Well, you could sit there and go, well, she's a liar. And I suppose there's some truth to that. Or um, she, she said a lie in that moment. You know, by focusing on the behavior as being what is pro or con, because the person is always the person. And sacred and holy in some sort of way, but the behavior can be vile. Right? Yeah, yeah, the behavior. Yeah, that's true. So, that's true. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice. So maybe it's, 
just semantics yeah. or the way that yeah. you put words together. And, Absolutely. And I'm still yeah. working on it myself. That's for sure. <laughs> well, don't we all? We can't all Absolutely. be perfect and polite, right? That's exactly right. I did apologize for one of my videos the other day. I, I, I said a cuss word and at the end of it. I said, now I don't normally cuss like that, but goodness, that just made me mad. Right. <laughs> And I'm debating if I should take it down because it just doesn't, you know, whatever. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Does it reflect you? Is that truthfully, authentically? Not really, because when I'm in front of people, I want to be the same person on social media that I am in front of people face to face. I want right. to be able to be brave enough to say what I think, but polite yes. enough and kind enough to uh, realize that the person in front of me is a human being. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And it's hard to do that when you can't look at somebody. It is. It is. Yeah. And it's really hard to do that when people are spewing stuff in your face. I mean, one of the, I, I've always dealt with social media from um, uh, everybody's welcome kind of viewpoint and I can handle it. And, you know, it's the kitchen's not too hot, so whatever. But I, with TikTok, I have started a, a little policy where, if someone gets into my comments and says something unnecessarily vile about me or about anyone else, I, I'm deleting and blocking right and left. I don't have energetic room in my life for that. So Yeah, but. I don't either. I don't either. And I tell you, if I feel the stress rise up in my chest or in yep. my throat or somewhere in my body, I pay attention to that much more now than I did ever before. Yes, Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Deb. I've thoroughly enjoyed this. We're definitely going to send uh, people to look at your poetry, your writing on deb-more.com. That's right. And yeah, and anything else that you want to give me after this, I'd be happy to put in the show notes. So thank you so much for being here, everybody, and see you next time. Great, Sally. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening today. My name is Sally Hendrick. Be sure to visit our website for show notes and more information on how you can inspire others. If you would like to contribute content to our magazine, please apply on our website at shoutyourcause.com. 